in a shaitan from fire, how can Allah punish shaitan in Jahannam with fire? It came from fire, right? So uh, it's a very good question actually. One of the best uh, questions I received this year. So the answer is very easy. And actually this has been answered by some of the uh, ulama. Do you know what we were created from in the Quran? Mud, basically water and dust or dirt. So I told Ziyad, if I take some water and I sprinkle the water on your face, will this hurt you? He said, no. And I said, if I get some uh, dust from the backyard and throw the dust in your face, will this hurt you? He said, no. And I said, if I make a combination, water and dust, and I make mud, and I put it in the sun to dry up, so I have a uh, brick, right? Or in our countries back home, they take the mud, they put it in the oven, and it turns into rock or a brick, a block of brick. Very hard, right? And it lasts for hundreds of years, no problem. So if I take this, the combination of water and mud, I put it in the sun and I take it and I hit you with it, will it hurt you? Yes, yes because it's now a brick, it will hurt you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish shaitan in the same way. Some say that uh, maybe if shaitan was made of a fire, that is 1,000 Fahrenheit, then Allah will put him in a fire that 1 million Fahrenheit. So when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ability, it is something beyond our imagination. All that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is to say, be and it is, kun This will answer the question. So now inshallah, the rest of my talk for just two, three minutes, we'll talk about shaitan, his mission and vision, right? Because shaitan has a mission in life and he has a vision. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the Quran, Inna shaytana lil insani adun mubin. The whole job of shaitan in this world is working 24-7, it works over time, he's always recruiting shaitan and inswa jinn. His mission is to take as many people as he can with him to Jahannam. Because as they say in English, uh, misery loves company. He doesn't want to be there all by himself. He wants to take as many people as he can. And Allah says this in Surah Fatir, إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيدِ He wants to take a big group with him to Jahannam. When you read in the Quran, he's our enemy. This is what Allah says very clearly in the Quran in many places. In the shaytan al insana adu mubin. He's your enemy. And it's not a secret. Everyone knows that shaytan is your enemy from the beginning till the end. Who took Adam السلام, out of Jannah? Shaitan, Iblis, yes. Who whispered to the brothers of Yusuf so they kill him? Shaitan, Shaitan. Uh, Iblis is the name of Shaitan when he was in, up there before he came down to earth. So when he came, his name became Shaitan. But before that, his name is Iblis. Who whispered to one of the children of Adam to kill his brother? Shaitan. Habil and Qabil, Shaitan. Who whispered to the people of Saba in Surah Naml to make sajda to the sun instead of Allah? Shaitan. Shaitan. So it is always Shaitan all the time. And Shaitan does the same trick with us all the time. He plays some tricks to get us in trouble. Like say for example, you are playing video games or maybe you are doing your homework and it is time for Salah. Salat al-Dhuhr and Shaitan will tell you, you still got time man, three hours. Play more, play more, no problem, take your time. Or I'm trying to wake up for Salat al-Fajr, half an hour before sunrise, and Shaitan will tell you, look man, you still got 30 minutes, you just sleep, get some rest, you know, because you're tired, I, you know, you're my buddy, you know, I love you. So sleep a little bit more, 15, 20 minutes, and I will wake, I will wake you up just in time, 10 minutes before sunrise, you pray, khalas. Sure enough, you wake up at 10.30 in the morning. Because shaitan is good at letting people down. And this is mentioned all over the Quran. So, his trick is to tell you, that you still have lots of time. When we do something wrong, say for example you are 15 or 17, shaitan will tell you, 
When you think of making tawbah or doing the right thing, shaitan will tell you, you are still young, do whatever you want. Then before you die, like five minutes before you die, go to Umrah, make Hajj, you know, make tawbah. Khalas, you'll be a good man. Now if you are 35, shaitan will tell you, no, you are still young because your mom passed away when she was 75. You still have time, you still have like 40 years, man. Now you are 95, and shaitan will tell you, you are still young. <laughs> 95 men, no hair, no teeth, the cane, you can hardly see anything, you're still young. So shaitan is always playing this game with you. You are still young. I think some of you, or many of you, still remember Brother Burhan from last year. Your yeah. colleague was only 12 years old. 12. Not 75, not 95. So young people die and old people die. So there are no guarantees. When your time comes, you go, right? So always keep this in, in your mind that uh, you can go anytime. The second trick, Shaitan will tell you, if you're doing something bad, something wrong, he will tell you, you're not doing anything, right? You, you stole the pencil from your friend's bag. Everyone else is a thief. People steal not a pencil, they steal thousands of dollars, they steal cars, there are thieves, chores. So your sin is very tiny compared to other people. This is how shaitan will tell you, right? <coughs> you pray two, three times a day, three namaz, and you don't do maghrib or isha, right? What is the big deal? This is what shaitan will tell you. And he will say, I know, shaitan will say, and he will give you statistics. He's very academic in the way he whispers. There are many people who don't pray at all, zero. Nothing. You pray two salawat, dhur and as, when you are at the school, then when you go home you don't pray at all. You're still good, man. You're good. There are people who don't pray at all. This is how shaitan will uh, resonate with you. The third one, and the last one for today, another trick of shaitan, he will tell you, after you have done a lot of bad things, he will tell you, look, man, hopeless case, you have done a lot of terrible things, you lied, you cheated, you did this, you did that. I don't think Allah will forgive you. You just keep doing whatever you're doing because uh, hopeless case. Khalas. And this is another thing, another mistake that we do. If you think that your mistake is bigger than the mercy of Allah, this is a terrible thing. Because no, no matter how big our sins are, they are not bigger than the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as we are sincere and we come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have ikhlas, he will forgive us. So don't let shaitan play all these tricks on you. Always say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the sirat al-mustaqeem. Give us hidayah. Give us the best in this life and the best in the life to come. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and your families and protect you. We'll see you tomorrow, inshaAllah. Jazakumullah khairan. As-salamu alaykum.